Hey yo, what is up Thrill Seekers? Today I am going to be giving you guys my full in-depth review of Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, which is the new for 2022 dive roller coaster that just opened up today, Saturday, July 30th, as of when I'm filming this, um, over at my home park, Six Flags, Fiesta, Texas. Now before we get into it, I just want to point out a couple of things that I am not going to be talking about. The main one is going to be the pre-show. Um, if you guys want to see the pre-show, you can probably find videos of it online on YouTube, but I do highly recommend it being a surprise to you guys. Um, the pre-show is really, really cool. But of course, everything else I will be talking about, I'll definitely like touch on the pre-show. Not gonna talk about specifically what happens, but you know, of course, it is a thing that will incorporate into my ranking of the ride. So first up, just from coming through the entrance all the way to getting on the ride, all throughout the ride experience, um, first you walk up, there's a super cool Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger sign. Um, it's held up by some cool like black scaffolding, um, and it looks pretty cool. It looks like something that, you know, it, it fits into the theme um, of Dr. Diabolical. Um, so you go up, Right, um, there's a whole bunch of audio everywhere um, in the queue line of Dr. Diabolical talking about her magical elixir that will make everyone young again. Um, so after you're done with the pre-show, these big double doors open and you go into the locker area. There are lockers for this ride. Um, everything has to go in it. Uh, you cannot leave anything in the ride platform. Um, personally, I'm a ride operator for this ride, actually. Um, so we didn't have it happen often, um, but there were definitely a couple times um, when someone didn't read the signs, um, our employee stationed at the locker didn't really catch it, um, and they walked up to the station with a bag. That happens. You're going to be sent back down to the lockers and have to wait back in that line up to the station. It's not a very long line, max of like maybe five or ten minutes, but it is definitely annoying if you just waited five or ten minutes, then you're like, oh, you can't, you can't leave the bag anywhere. You have to go back down, get a locker, go back up. Um, so the lockers, they are decently big. If you have like a drawstring backpack, a purse, um, you know, obviously your phone, your keys, uh, drink bottles, things like that, those will 100% fit in lockers. Um, of course, if you have a drink bottle, I recommend emptying it just so that it doesn't spill all over the lockers, but obviously that's, that's up to you. Um, if your stuff gets wet, that's on you. Um, but it, it is a relatively big locker, right? It's not like if you've ridden Steel Vengeance or Twisted Timbers, those tiny little things that like can barely fit your phone and your keys in your wallet. Um, it is not like that. They are a little bit bigger as they are more for larger items, right? Fanny packs, backpacks, things like that. Um, in terms of how the lockers work, um, all you have to do is scan any sort of barcode. Um, you can scan, um, I, I know people who like scan their ID barcodes. Um, you can scan your park ticket. Um, that's what it says on the lockers itself. It says like scan park ticket open up a locker, ride the ride, you know. Um, so if you have like your membership card or you have a park ticket, let's say you're like, yeah, I'm gonna bring my phone on the ride, um, and you have the park ticket on your phone, you can just scan that, um, and that'll work as well. Um, we also have um, little dispensers with cards. So if for whatever reason you don't have your park ticket um, or anything like that, you can grab one of those cards, use it, bring that card on the ride. Um, and then after the ride, there's a little box for you to drop back off that card um, so that we can reset it um, and put them back for, for the next group of people as we have, we have a lot of cards, um, but, you know, not enough for, like, a, an entire day's worth of people um, going through, especially when we have more crowded days. Um, now, if for whatever reason you lock something in the locker, Fortunately, the retail people in the shop in the exit do have the keys, um, but of course they will have you like identify what is in the locker before they open it um, to make sure that it's actually your stuff. Um, but again, lockers, super, super helpful. Um, it makes loading and unloading the ride it's super quick and easy, um, and it makes sure that your stuff is secured. There are three trains, so if you are ever worried about, oh, what if my stuff gets stolen? 
don't have to worry about that um, as there are the lockers. Um, in addition, if you have maybe a larger bag or backpack, there are um, really two things that you can do. Um, number one, I always tell people try taking stuff out of that backpack, put it in a separate locker, um, and then put the backpack itself in a different locker. Um, usually that works. If it doesn't work, if you have like this massive backpack and like you can't, you can't fit it in there, you will have to purchase a locker over at the entrance of Iron Rattler, like right at the entrance of Iron Rattler, um, which is literally right across the entrance of, of Cliffhanger. There is a little sign um, as you walk in the queue line that has the dimensions for the locker. Um, it says your stuff must be able to fit in this, this, it literally has a box, like this box. So as you go up, Kind of put your bag up to that box and see if it fits. Um, I have definitely seen a lot of people's bags not fit um, and they've had to either go and get a locker from Iron Rattler um, or they have just had to like take stuff out and put it in a different locker. Usually that works. Um, but just be aware of that if you tend to bring bigger backpacks. Um, you may have to fumble around with it a little bit in order to get it in that locker. Now as you walk up to the station, um, there are again more speakers uh, basically of Dr. Diabolical saying like, yeah, you're screwed. Um, <laughs> she's like, do you really think that there was a fountain elixir? Like you fools, you know, there is no, like, I think one of my favorite lines, it says, uh, there is no, there is no elixir. There is no fountain of youth. There is no escape. And like, and like, there's like big, um, like evil music playing and it, it definitely does set the mood. Um, they are still working on some of the landscaping um, for the ride, um, so definitely down the road it's going to look even better. Um, right now, you know, they put the grass in, um, kind of near the station there's a planter that they're working on right now um, and it should be done really, really soon. So if you come like a week from now, that'll probably be done. Um, but um, just just be aware they are still kind of working a little bit on some of the landscaping around the ride um, as they kind of had to scramble um, in that department. Now as you walk up to the ride, there will be a grouper um, that will kind of like direct you to a row. Um, try to work with them as, as much as possible. I can attest 100% that every row is awesome. Um, the front definitely does have a different experience than the back, um, but in my opinion, it's not really worse or better, um, it's just different. Um, but, of course, if you really, really, really want one row, um, we are required to take row requests, um, at least on Do Dr. Diabolical specifically. So, if you really, really want a row, you can ask for the row. Um, you may give, get a um, get a bad look from from our employees, but you can't ask for a for a row. Um, we will not like tell you like no. Um, you know we we will tr uh, try our best to make sure that all of the trains are full um, while while still getting you know making sure everyone gets their preferred seating as well. Um, now. As you walk onto the ride, there are seven across seating. Um, just walk all the way down to the final seat in your row. Um, we're going to dispatch the train and you're going to go on out in the ride. Um, first off, the restraints are decently comfortable. Um, they definitely, of course, it's the best restraints, so they definitely do sit on your shoulders a little bit weird. Um, so if you have sensitive shoulders, then it may like press down a little bit, um, especially if you're taller. Um, but if you've ridden Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, not nearly as bad. Um, it is a lot more comfortable than that. Um, it feels less painful and more just kind of snug on your shoulders. Um, but honestly, I haven't really had any issues with those restraints. Um, if you have a little bit of larger body dimensions, definitely go check out the test seat at the front. Um, this is a very, very restrictive ride um, in terms of restraints. Uh, not super restrictive, but, um, but decently restrictive, as in, you know, um, the seat belt has to be able to buckle. Um, we do have larger seats in rows two and three, um, so if you feel like you fit into that category of, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit, 
Use that test seat. If you can fit in the test seat, then you are going to sit in either row two or three in the middle seat. Um, it's going to be marked by the red seat belt. Um, so again, if you feel like you fit into the category of maybe being a little bit of a larger guest, um, definitely sit in the middle seat of row two or row three in the red seat belt, um, and then try from there. Um, of course, we try to we try our best to get you in, um, but we're not going to force down the restraint so much where you can't breathe, right? Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of our policy on that. Um, now, as you get dispatched out into the ride, you're going to start going up your lift hill. The lift hill is very fast, actually. Um, it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the ride. Um, because as soon as you engage with the lift hill and start going up, you'll start going up slowly, and then all of a sudden it'll just speed up. Um, and honestly, your head kind of gets like pinched to the back. It is a 45 degree angle lift hill, so you are looking pretty steep up. Um, as you're going up that lift and it, again, it is very fast. So it's honestly like a pretty intense lift hill, um, which I really, really enjoy. There is no time to like, uh, to, you know, to second guess yourself, you know, um, it is right up to the top. As you make it to the top, you're going to round the corner and you're actually going to start hearing some audio, um, at the top and you'll hear it as you're walking through the queue line every time a train kind of comes over that drop you're going to hear the audio um, so as soon as you start rounding that corner you're going to hear you know that same intense music it's like da na na and then uh, and then Dr. Diabolical will start speaking to you <laughs> So you're going to hang over the drop for five seconds. It's exactly five seconds. Um, you're going to hang over the drop on life. You're going to drop. Um, and then you're going to hear her laughing as you go down the drop. Um, it's super, super cool. It's like, your fear gives me life drop. And then she like does her diabolical laugh um, as you go down the drop and you just hear it fading out in the background. Um, it is super, super, super cool. Um, so absolutely love that part. That audio, honestly, I've written it with and without the audio. The audio is a game changer. Um, not even that like the ride was bad without the audio, um, but it does definitely offer a different experience um, and a better experience. So um, that audio, amazing touch. Um, you know, any every other dive coaster is just silent up there, and you're like, all right, all right. You know, when you start hanging over, you're like, whoa. And then everyone screams down the drop, right? Um, on Doctor Diabolical, there's that audio. Absolutely amazing touch by the park. So really, really happy that they did that. Um, as you go down that drop, um, it is a 95 degree drop. That is the steepest drop on any dive coaster, as in it is beyond vertical. 90 degrees, right here straight down, 95, just like, just a little bit like that. Um, so as you go down the drop, you will be going just a little bit under yourself as you go down. Um, can you feel the extra five degrees? Yes. Um, I have not heard one person say no. Um, I have talked to, uh, um, to, uh, to, you know, some people from Upstop Media, um, some, some other YouTubers just around, um, from the VIP event on, uh, on, on Friday, and every single person, every single enthusiast that I've talked to has been like, oh yeah, you can feel that extra five degrees, it's awesome. Um, a lot of, what I like to say is a lot of rides kind of have three sections to the drop. It feels like you're getting pulled down, and then it feels like you're free falling for a second, and then you have the pull out, right? Um, Dr. Diabolical only has two of those sections. The entire time that you're going down the drop, it just feels like you're getting pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled, and, pulled, and then you level out. Um, and that, that level out is very, very intense as well, especially if you're sitting in the back row. Um, that first drop, if you want the hang, sit in the front. Um, the back row doesn't really tilt forward that much at all, but as you drop, it whips you down that drop. So if you're definitely like, if you're more of an intensity junkie, um, then definitely the back row is where it's at. Um, if you want, like, you know, if you really are, are there for the, the, you know, the hang over the drop, um, then of course the front row is where it's at. Um, both places will give you a lot of airtime. just the back row will give you a little bit more. Um, as you go down that drop, 
scream as loud as you can. It's super fun. Um, you're going to go down, gonna go up into the first inversion, which is an immelman. You go through it relatively quickly. Um, you get a little bit of hang time, um, but it definitely, definitely is a, it's a little bit intense. And then you make it to the top, you kind of stall out for a bit. Um, one of my, I think my favorite inversion though is definitely the 270 degree roll, um, especially if you're sitting towards the back, you actually get a lot of hang time on that element. Um, so as you go up over, um, you get a whole bunch of hang time kind of going through um, and it is super, super awesome. Um, as you go around that corner, you're going to hop up into the mid-course break run. Mid-course break run does slow you down, um, just like every other dive coaster. It does slow you down a decent amount. Um, if you are riding in a more full train, it will definitely slow you down a lot less, um, or at least less quickly. Um, so that is always preferred, in my opinion. Um, in addition, there is audio on, uh, on the mid-course break run, so as, as you make it to a certain point, you'll hear that same, like, da -da -da music, um, and I think Dr. Dybal Cole, she says, that's not enough, um, like, that's not enough, I need more, you know, scream, scream as loud as you can, you know, I need your fear to live, and then she, like, you know, and then she does her laugh as you drop down. Um, so again, super, super cool. And it makes the mid-course break run feel more a part of the ride. Um, on other dive coasters, you slow down, and you're like, all right, all right. <laughs> and you're kind of like waiting there for a second, and then you drop, right? For Dr. Diabolical, um, it, it feels like it's, it's supposed to be there, right? It feels like you're supposed to slow down because there's audio, there's a show element on that, on that break run um, before you drop. So super, super cool touch again with the audio. Um, as you go down, if you're sitting towards the back, you're gonna get whipped over. Um, if you're sitting towards the front, it's gonna be more of like a little float down um, to the ground. Um, you're gonna pull out, go into what they call an extreme banked turn. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it, it goes up, um, you kind of swoop down. Um, that's probably one of the more calm elements on the ride. Um, as you go up into the airtime hill, it definitely depends on where you sit. If it is a full train and it's running fast, in the front you actually get some ejector. Um, I was sitting in the front uh, a couple times and every time you go up into that airtime hill, um, it's a very quick, like, jolt up. Um, if you're sitting in the back, you're going to feel more floater as you get more pulled over the airtime hill. A little bit more gradually, but a little bit like longer, more sustained airtime in the back. Um, in the front, it kind of just jerks you up for a second. Um, but of course, if you like your ejector airtime, um, going to be the front row, at least for that specific element. Um, and in the back, it's a little bit more floaty. Uh, from there you go into the helix. That helix is actually really awesome. If you're sitting on the right hand side of the tray, um, then you can literally like, it feels like you can touch the ground. It's, it's crazy. Um, it is very, very low to the ground, decently intense, um, and, and just pretty fun in general when you pop up into the brakes. Um, popping up into the brakes, it's a little bit of an abrupt transition. Um, it kind of throws you to the side and then throws you up. Um, it's not so intense where it's like, whoa, um, it's not I-305 level. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you like those, you know, intense snaps, um, then you'll, you'll get a little bit of it here. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's it. That is Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. Um, in terms of where I rank it in the park, in the park, I would say number two, just behind Iron Rattler. Definitely like it better than Superman and Wonder Woman, um, but of course Iron Rattler still takes that top spot just by a little bit. Um, but honestly, Dr. Diabolical, pretty dang close. Definitely something, um, you know, I am going to ride basically every single time I go to the park. Um, and honestly, I think as an experience, Dr. Diabolical may edge out Iron Rattler. Um, just, just, uh, just like how, you know, Velocicoaster, a lot of people prefer that ride because it's a full experience versus Iron Gwazi, which is just super intense. Um, very similar vibe there. Um, Iron Rattler, uh, another RMC. It is, you know, more intense, more whippy, more crazy. Um, Dr. Diabolical, it's a B&M dive coaster, so it's more graceful. Um, the general public will like it more. Um, and it has 
um, you know, more theming and, and the queue line is, is cool and the pre-show is cool and all of that kind of stuff. So depending on what you like in rides, you can make your judgment. Um, so far, most people have it as number two in the park, right behind Iron Valley. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing ride. Highly, highly, highly recommend going out to Six Spice Fiesta, Texas to ride this ride. I have ridden um, four of the five dive coasters now in the US. The only one that I have not ridden is Emperor, um, which is kind of the sister ride to Dr. Diabolical. Um, but yeah, I have ridden Val Raven, Shikra, Griffin. Um, and I have to say, Dr. Diabolical is 100% my favorite out of the four. Um, so if you like those rides, definitely go check out Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger. It is an amazing experience over at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, and overall, something that you definitely do not want to pass up the opportunity to ride. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. And I will see you guys all next time. Peace. Out.